What's up, spectators? Welcome back to an episode of Last Window. Um, it's been quite a while since the previous video, so I'm going to try my best to do a small recap before we go any further. But um, if you remember, Marie, one of the tenants on maybe the second floor, sold her ring to Betty. And we're checking out the authenticity, so we saw Dylon, who has the tools to magnify and, and authenticate the ring. While we did that, we found the image of a small condor, the same condor that Dylon's been drawing, and that we've been seeing it pop up here and there. So because of that, we're going to the fourth floor because we saw a condor somewhere or something. Anyways, so we're currently going to 406. I must have passed it. Oh, no, it's right here. Okay. The door's locked. It's not gonna budge. Who's that? The murderer, Dylon. I had a feeling I'd find you here, Mr. Hyde. I knew you wouldn't be able to resist. You're here to take a look at the Condor picture, right? Yeah, what if I am? The problem is that the door to this room is locked. And without the key, you can't get inside to look around. So it would seem. You want me to open it up for you? You got a key then? Of course, Mrs. Patrice gave me the spare keys. I can get into any room I like, even yours. For maintenance purposes, of course. Wink, 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 wink. I'll unlock it for you. Wow, that is just a great, you uh, know, look, posture, with girth. There you go, it's open now. Thanks. This is it, Mr. Hyde. The room where the condor picture is. Where's the picture of the condor? Where do you think? Cut the crap, Dylon. Go on, have a look around and try to find it. You would have needed to look around anyway if I hadn't accompanied you here. Yeah, you got a point. Anyway, I gotta go. I'll come back and lock up later. Dylon leaves the room. Let's see. There's a picture on the wall. The frame is slightly worn from age. It's an old photograph of Hotel Cape West from the outside. This photograph it looks like it's from back when the hotel first opened. This looks like a picture from the time this building was still a hotel. The frame's a little crooked. Huh? That design. Yes. There's something underneath the frame. No respect, Kyle Hyde. But seriously, what am I supposed to do here? Like, it doesn't actually come off, so... Do you want me to swing it a bunch some more? Oh! Get! Man, are you kidding me with this? The pictures come off the wall. Ah found it. 
There's a picture of a condor drawn on the wall. This must be what Dylon was talking about. Now why would this picture also be engraved on Marie's ring? This must be the... Um, uh, yes. There's a discolored leather-bound book on top of the table. It has a star symbol on the cover. A star. Marie told me about this. My brother and husband used the world, uh, word along with others working in the hotel. It was a sort of secret code linked to the closing down party. A star. I take the old album. Okay. Some picture frames have been wrapped up in material and left on this table. They've been tied up too. Too securely for me to unwrap them and take a look. Okay. We were just here. It's hard to actually see anything with this camera angle. Ah, here we go. A safe. There's an old safe with a dial next to it. There's a large filing cabinet next to the wall. The drawers are all locked, so I can't open them. Okay. Maybe there isn't anything else I can do here. But we can go to see Marie, and she can tell us about the book. The design in room 406 is the same one I found engraved on Marie's ring. That condor design's got me thinking. Before I get stuck into that, though, I better let Betty know what I found out. Okay, I guess we'll go see Betty first, then. <gasps> what is it, Tammy? Hmm? Are you hungry? Yeah? Hi! Have you got a moment, Betty? Oh, it's you, Mr. Hyde. Try not to get too excited. Were you waiting for somebody? No, not really. I've checked out that ring for you. You did? Yeah. You better come on in. Pretty room. Much better than Kyle's. All right, here we go. Betty, tell me what you found out about the ring. I'm sorry about this, but checking whether the diamond in your ring is genuine or not. Well, it may not be as easy as I thought. It won't? Did Marie tell you anything about the history of the ring? No, not a thing. Looks like Betty hasn't got a clue about the condor mark or its meaning. Is there something wrong, Mr. Hyde? Not really. It's just that I remembered something when I was staring at the ring. Remembered what? Something Marie told me about. She was telling me how she came to have it. She got it as a present from her brother before he died 13 years ago. Are you serious? I certainly didn't know that. It's true, I'm afraid. Her parents died when she was very young and her brother looked after her. They were very close and the ring was a present from him to her. I'm sure that ring has a great sentimental value for her. You're right, it must have, but she didn't breathe a word of that to me when we spoke. I imagine she was worried that you would have refused to buy it. This may not be what you want to hear, but I think you should return it to her. I'm sure it'd be for the best. You may be right. I would never have bought it if I'd known all the facts. I don't think I'm up to handing it back to Marie myself. Would you mind doing it for me, Mr. Hyde? Tell her she can keep the money. You sure about this? Yeah, completely. Well, if you say so, I'll return the ring. Looks like I'm popular today. Let me see who that is. Betty opens the door to see who it is, then steps out into the hallway. I can hear the voices of Betty and her visitor from behind the closed door. 
You said you'd give it back to me today, right? Yes, of course. Here you go. Sorry about that. Who was it? Just a friend. Nobody you know, Mr. Hyde. Okay, then. I think it's time I got out of your hair. Of course. I leave Betty's room. Charles? So it was you in Betty's room just now. What were you up to? <laughs> yeah, that's right. For a moment, I was certain it was that other person who'd paid her a visit. Also me? I guess that means you came to see Betty then. Yes, I did. I was there to collect the key that I'd lent her. Who do you mean? Who did you think had come to see her? Betty's new boyfriend, of course. Her boyfriend? Yes. The last time I went to see her in her room, he was also there. What's his name? I didn't ask, sorry. What can you tell me about him? Let me think. Well, there was something I didn't like about him. And he certainly doesn't live in this building. Which key did she borrow? It was the key to room 205. 205? That's vacant, isn't it? Why have you got the key to that room in the first place? I've been looking after it for Billy. Ah, right, your friend. Yes, Billy Christie. He was here until the end of last month. We went to the same university. Even though he's moved out, we still meet each other from time to time at university. When I spoke to him three days ago, he asked if I could return the spare key for room 205 to Mrs. Patrice. The spare key? Yes, that's right. Apparently he couldn't find the spare key when he was moving out. So he couldn't give it back to Mrs. Patrice in person. He managed to find it in the end though, when he checked through his things again. That's the key that Betty borrowed. Why did Betty need the spare key? She just asked me for it one day. When she heard that I was looking after it for Billy. She said she wanted to borrow it. What made Betty ask to borrow the spare key to room 205 in the first place? I think that was because her boyfriend had asked to borrow it. Her boyfriend? I was on my way to return the key to Mrs. Patrice, but she wasn't home. While I was in the lobby, Betty and her boyfriend turned up. That was when I told them that I was looking after the key. Then Betty's boyfriend said something to her and she asked to borrow the key. Why the hell would he want to see the room? That's a question I can't answer, I'm afraid. He just stared at me while she asked. And I got the impression he's not someone I'd want to refuse. So that's how it happened, and why I went to Betty's room to get the key just now. Hey, Charles. Would you lend me the spare key too? Why? Well, we're all gonna be leaving here soon. I thought I'd like to take one last look around. It'd be nice to see what room 205's like. I really have to get it back to Mrs. Patrice though. I'll make sure you have it back in no time. What do you say? Okay, Mr. Hyde, why not? But I expect it back as soon as you finish looking at the room. Don't sweat it, it'll be back before you know it. I received the spare key to room 205. I'm going back to my room now. Charles finishes speaking and heads off. And this is for 205, yes? Let's take a look. So, 
Rex and Betty came in here, did they? There appears to be something on a shelf in the closet. There's a typewriter on the shelf in the closet. What's a typewriter doing here? Hang on, a typewriter. The order sheets I got were all done using a typewriter. Could this be the one they were typed on? I take the typewriter out of the closet and place it onto the tabletop. Now the typewriter's on the desk. Okay. There's the typewriter I took out of the closet. I remember there was something strange about the letters on the order sheet. I really should type something on this one and compare the print. But there's no paper. This presents a problem. Suppose I'd better have a look around for some. Okay. Don't I have a bunch of junk though? Hold on. I have a letter. I don't have actual paper, though. Uh, bottles. Maybe it's in here? The varnish on the cabinet has rubbed off in places. There's dust on it everywhere except the top. It must have been dusted for a reason. Did someone come in here? And if so, what for? This closet's falling apart. The hinges are broken on the closet doors. It's impossible to close them. Hmm. Oh, here we go. There are some sh Ugh. Let's try that again. There are some sheets of paper inside the drawer. I was gonna say, sham sheets. Just what I was looking for. I take the sheets of paper. Okay, back out. Now the typewriter's on the desk. There's the typewriter I took out of the closet. No paper. Well, yes, you gotta load it up, you see? But while I do that, let me look at... The reward for finding the item, blah, 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 blah. I just wanted to see. The letter is about... The T, it's elevated slightly, which is why it's a giveaway. Oh, dear. Okay. This is good. I'm glad I can't skip this. All right, let's get the... Oh, it's down here. Now just feed in a sheet. All set. Now to try typing something. I remember all the T's were kind of skewed. Okay. Bingo! I guess that proves it. Looks like there's no denying that the order sheet was typed on this typewriter. Maybe that explains why Rex was so keen to get in here. Wait. That might mean that Betty knows something she's not letting on about. Time to shoot her! Alrighty, I can't believe they put this room in the game just so they can show me a typewriter. Okay. Betty! What is it, Mr. Hyde? I got something to ask you, Betty. It's about 2.05. You better come in. Damn right, I better. Hey, Betty. Yes, can I help you with something? 
It was Charles you were talking to in the hallway earlier. I'd like to know why you asked him to lend you the key to room 205. No reason. I just wanted to see what the room was like, that's all. So you went into the room? Maybe. What kind of answer is that? The best you're getting. Why are you asking me this? Betty, if you and that Rex guy are up to something, then I've got some questions. Now tell me what I want to know. And just what do you mean by up to something? You must have had a real reason to borrow that key. What was it? Now would be a good time to tell me. There's nothing to tell. Come on, I wasn't born yesterday. It's the truth! Hmm... Betty... Did you borrow it for Rex? What? There's no use in trying to hide it. You borrowed the key because he asked you to, right? There's no fooling you, is there, Mr. Hyde? It's true. Rex asked me to borrow the key from Charles. He said he really wanted to use that room. Why the hell are you even giving that guy the time of day? You do know that Rex does for a living, right? Yeah, I know. He investigates insurance claims. Investigate isn't the word I'd use. He's bad news. Did you know that too? Yes, I know. But it's okay. After all, I... Mr. Hyde. I understand. I really do. I know he's not really interested in me. Listen, Betty. Also... I know the real reason he started going out with me. Uh, what did he plan to do in there? Why did Rex go out with you? I would assume the go out with you, but... Hmm. Oh, it's not a choice. I'm so I can ask both. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. It's been a while since I've done this. Do you know what he planned to do in 205? I can't be 100% certain, but this is what he said. He told me that there was something he needed to check. Uh, was it about the incident? Was it about Marie? Was it about Marie? I think it was. So he's still looking into her then. If you guys remember from before, it's the insurance fraud. How should I know? I don't know whether he's still interested in her or not. I don't know anything. We won't. Sp we don't speak anymore. Like I said, he seemed to be interested in Marie. I noticed it a while back. But after he got what he wanted, he stopped coming here. What was his real reason for going out with you? He started going out with me because... He wanted to check the situation on the second floor. Betty, what interested him? Was it the tenants? Yeah, that's right. He was keen on establishing who was friends with who and their relationships. That's what he came to find out. When I asked him why he was so interested, he said he was interested in putting a stop to Marie's accomplice. So he said he'd got what he wanted. Not in so many words. But I'm sure he did. He kept asking me all these questions about the people that live here. Then, after he'd seen room 205 and taken a look around, he didn't contact me anymore. I didn't even have a number I could use to call him. What did Rex mean by Marie's accomplice? I have no idea. That was the first and last I ever heard on the subject. But he said he wanted to put a stop to them, right? That's what he said, but I have no idea what he meant. And why should I? After all, all he did was use me to get what he wanted. It's just like you said, Mr. Hyde. I did borrow the key from Charles just so Rex could get inside the room. But I just passed it on to him. I never went into the room myself. So I hope you'll believe me when I say I can't tell you exactly what he did in there. And that's the truth, is it? Cross my heart. Why would I want to lie to you, Mr. Hyde? 
I don't think you're lying. But if you knew he was the only using you, Betty, why'd you stay with him? He was there when I felt lonely. He promised me he'd always be there for me. Guess he would say that. But I knew even then. I knew he wasn't the type of man who keeps his promises. You may not want to hear what I think, but here goes. Men often go for a lonely woman. Maybe it's love, maybe not, I don't know. If loneliness brings you together, you'll be even lonelier when it ends. Come on, Betty. You can't go around wearing a face like that. Oh, really? I can't believe I'm getting relationship advice from you. It's a good point. This guy has nobody in his life. Except a phone call lady. I forget her name. But it's true. You can't go moping around forever. And besides, smiling suits you. Can I ask you something, Mr. Hyde? Why is it that you're so interested in Rex? Is it because you spoke to Marie? Did you believe what she told you? It's because he loves Rex. There are a number of things about her insurance claim that interest me. I'm curious about the whole incident. Let me guess. You heard about me once being a detective from Rex, right? He did mention it. Thought he might have. Did he say anything else? No, just that. I see. Betty, did you ever see Rex posting a letter to anybody here? A letter? I've never seen him with a letter. Okay, if I come up with any more questions about Rex later on, would you mind answering them for me? No, not at all. Right, I better be going. Of course. I leave Betty's room. So now I know that the mysterious order sheet came from the typewriter in 205. Also, I discovered that Rex is trying to uncover a possible accomplice to Marie. What's Rex's connection to that order? Not only that. The engraved mark on Marie's ring and the one on the fourth floor. What do they mean? I think it's time I gathered my thoughts about all that's happened. I woke up on December 23rd with a hangover and a dry throat to boot. I grabbed a drink from the vending machine in the lobby, then called Rachel. She told me... Uh... Right. Rachel told me about the emblem Hotel Cape West used to use. It was an emblem in the shape of a condor. At Lucky's Cafe, Claire talked to me about a matter concerning her dad. After that, I came across Marie in the second floor hallway, coming out of Betty's room. I returned to my room and called Red Crown. Ed was there, and he had some light to shit on Frank's past. He told me... Poison wine bottle, disgraced by Hugh Speck. That's right, because Hugh Speck's the politician that we're not supposed to like. Right. During an internal investigation when Frank was in his 40s, his name came up. It was Ed's ex-boss, Hugh Speck, that was responsible. Betty came to my room to explain why Marie had paid her a visit before. Marie wanted Betty to buy something from her. It was a wedding ring. Oh wait, no, it's from her brother, right? Sorry, maybe it's not a wedding ring. Marie asked Betty to buy her ring for $500. No, it, w it, w it was a wedding... What? what? Ah. ah, doesn't matter. Betty was concerned about the diamond being fake, so she gave it to him, me to check. I decided Dylon might be able to help. I went to see Dylon in his room, and while he was on the phone... I used his magnifying glass to take a closer look at Marie's ring. I discovered a small mark that had been engraved onto the base. It was identical to the one Dylon had sketched in his notebook. It was... I found a condor in his notebook and on the ring. Charles told me he had lent something to Betty. It was the spare key to 205. I got the key from Charles and took the opportunity to take a look around myself. I tried out a typewriter I found there and discovered. When I pressed the T, the resulting print was higher than the rest of the letters. This matched with the order sheet I received. I tried to find out if this was Rex's handiwork by putting the pressure on Betty. Unfortunately, talking to her didn't answer this question. The riddle behind the condor appearing on both Marie's ring and in room 406, together with Frank's connection to the incident 13 years ago. With past and present colliding like this, I'm left with even more questions. There's still no cr concrete link between these events and the lost Scarlet Star.
You can now read the events of this chapter in the Last Window novel. Alright, while we're saving this here, I would also like to end it because it's been half an hour. So, stay tuned for the next episode, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye!